Hello everybody, welcome back to the new episode of La Copy with Henry and Mike. This is Henry. And this is Mike. Today is the 9th of October 2022. It is a Sunday and I'm here in Berlin in Schöneberg in an apartment. I'm still in Singapore and I'm Ooh. like six hours ahead of you. It's currently 3.40 p.m. I suppose around 9. So Mike, Let's how are you? How's your week going? great this week i just had a barbecue last night with the family yeah it's a good vibe i really like it you know especially when it's a weekend everybody kind of wind down for one whole week worth of you know work yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. yeah just catch up with everybody have some drink and food laugh away yeah basically Fantastic. That's it. and this time around you guys don't have to prepare anything vegan or vegetarian right since i'm not there um <laughs> Yeah, since you're not here, so relatively easier. But it's not like we have a lot of food. Just has some fish, mm. uh, seafood base, and a little bit of chicken. Yeah. And that's about it. Had some mm. beer as well along the way. How about you? How's everything? So anyway, so I've been yeah. burning it for a week so far. I moved from the previous place to a new place. In burning, we say it's in the ring. So there's A zone, B zone, C zone. So A, B, they're kind of like in the ring. There's a ring bun. Okay. So everything right, within right. the ring, we say it is in the city, basically. Lots of things happening. Okay. It's really well connected. And you can just go from place A to place B very quickly. Not very quickly. It takes some time, but just like infrastructure-wise, it's easier for you. Compared to when you are on outskirts, you know, you just take some time to come in but anyway so that aside i'm in the city now in schoenberg it's really a beautiful suburb i love it a lot the architecture here is okay. stunning it's on the western part of berlin different type of people it's a bit more affluent a bit more family oriented mm-hmm. yeah just a bit more chill it's a bit like frankfurt kind of style a bit more organized and clean and stuff like this compared to the eastern okay. part eastern part is a bit more you know single kind of life more party like lives happen more you know like 24 7 kind of thing a lot of things going on i've been really like running around not only running errands and getting some paperwork done i'm almost there so which is good because i'm flying off tomorrow morning to zurich so i have been doing a lot of filming like with my accountability partner goda who i'm sure is listening to this episode right now I would say that it's really nice to work with her because she also understood, you know, all the lighting, the camera, everything, how it runs. And then she gives like the angles, you know, the, her perspective, what she wants and stuff like this. So I think mm-hmm. when we started last week, the first filming, it just clicked immediately. And yesterday was even smoother. We filmed literally an hour and 58 minutes. So I have lots of ideas coming out, like how can we push our accountability partner call, which happened once a week, even to the next level to kind of help each other in the content creation journey. And she was telling me about her life in Denmark. She's originally from Lithuania, and then she went to Denmark to study. She was just telling me about her experiences there in comparison to Germany, particularly in Berlin because she was there for seven years. In Berlin, she has been here for three years. So of course, she said there's always a spot for her for Copenhagen, Denmark. I was very intrigued. So I was asking her all the questions like, do you really reckon that the Dens are the happiest in the world? You know, the happiest, not the happy, but happiest in the world. Okay, two points here. First, the whole world has, you know, kind of marketed that Denmark is the happiest place in the world. So people can't really just believe in it. So I think the marketing campaign did very well, whatever has done that. But second point is that I think what she meant was right. You know, she said their expectations are not as high. So they know how to set their expectations in some way. Because yeah, the yeah, higher I, of I, expectation I you, you have, you want more, right? But if you don't achieve that, yeah. then obviously, obviously as a human you'll be very very miserable because you didn't really achieve that it's really to do what's the perspective how you perceive the world and also what's your expectation be to the external world or to the internal world itself so we thought like maybe we will do you know some kind of collaboration per week as well become part of our accountability partner call i said fantastic because she was also asking me about you know singapore asia you know my experiences in germany you know they have not been to Asia before so that's why they are very intrigued and she's the one of the die-hard fan for Henry and mine you know she say always give her some ideas when we talk and we chat when we do, we're doing the podcast by the same time she also say you know you show her different areas of Singapore you know she thought that was very cool so I think we're doing the right thing <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's with Goda. And I got to know her okay, okay. her boyfriend and her little daughter and the little bunny. Ah oh, Okay. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, really. Okay. And then yesterday was we'll like overall very good conversations. It is her. quality time. Yeah. 
And then we shared this kind of like passionate interest for building YouTube. And also we talk about the business model behind, which helped a lot because this week I talked to a couple of friends here in Berlin. And I chatted this with a friend of mine that traveled to Portugal last year. I didn't travel with her, but I went there by myself and I got to know her there. And she happened to be from Berlin. So last year during COVID time, we actually hung out for, for four months together. You know, we went from Madeira to Azores oh. and then we went back to Lisbon. But we spent a lot of time. She was yeah, starting okay. back then her own, so to say, agency, and she has no idea how to do it, but she learned. And then now, when I saw her the other day, she has already right. clients, you know, and then she was telling me how to do the sales and stuff like that. I was just quite amazed with that, how within the eight months' time she can do it. So I think I realized there are two things about this is one, I'm an overthinker. Even though I'm really pushing a lot to just do it, just do it, but still, I'm still thinking too much. Because from Lina, that friend of mine, she just do it. Mm -hmm. And she only offered two services. One is photography, and then the other one is branding on LinkedIn. And she has her business model there and different packages she offer. She called it female founder empowerment. That's the niche market she says she can relate really well to and she find her story very interesting. She just keep it everything simple and just do it. Through Lina's experience, I thought I need to just do more. So Golda introduced me to this book. When she was in Italy, she was reading this book and she said, it's called Don't Believe Everything You Think by Joseph Noin. Okay, Henry, just download it from the audiobook and then listen to it while you're commuting. So I did, I finished it within one day during the commute time. So that's probably also the topic for me today is about thinking versus thoughts. I want to ask you, what's the difference between thinking and thought? I guess thinking is the process, digesting certain information, the process of it. Mm. The thought, I guess, is the outcome of that. The first part is right. Like, it makes sense okay. logically. The second part, yeah. you say that's the outcome. I mean, from my perspective, it is what not. What the book define? Okay, the book basically said this. Thinking is the root cause of all suffering. So let's okay. break it down from a language perspective, okay? Thoughts in English language is a noun. It is just there. It comes to you, it exists. You don't actively thinking about it. It just, you know, like aha moment. Aha, uh -huh, I got that idea kind of mm. thing. It comes on within. Thinking is from the verb think, right? So thinking, I-N-G, which means you're currently actively doing that. And when you break it down even further to German or to Chinese, German is the same thing as English. Thoughts means Gedanken, and then thinking means denken. So it's the same thing as nouns and also a verb itself. And then in Chinese, thoughts is called si xiang. Thinking is called si kao. So si xiang is a very passive way of it already exists there from the within and then si kao, the last word kao, kao what does it mean it means like examination analysis like you go in to do certain kind of like research to find out some details more so it requires you to actively do something that from a language perspective already explain what's the difference between thoughts and thinking so according to this author, okay. thinking is the root cause of all suffering. To me, that kind of like has a little bit principle from the Buddhist part. I mean, even though in the books itself, there's different quotes, you know, from the East and the West kind of philosophy to make it all together. But what this author really did well, I think, is to synthesize everything that he has learned, he has read, and he has heard and then make it to a more modern twist so it's easier for people like us nowadays to understand and to apply to our life. A lot of time we know a certain thing, like it's just happened, but then we keep thinking about it. When we have a problem or an issue, sometimes it's really hard for us to let go. But why is that so? Mm -hmm. Because you keep thinking about it. You keep wanting to find the root cause of it. You keep wanting to know why that is so. Perhaps to some extent, it helps you to realize what's going on, but then you have to be very conscious about it and also be very aware of what's going on. But then the more you think about it, the more you feel stressed and there's a lot of emotions involved. So in that case, it does not bring you to another level of like joy or happiness that you truly kind of deserve. Let me give you an example. There's different frameworks there, how to reach a certain level. So what he was trying to say that you need to create an environment whereby it helps you to just focus on the thought part. Get rid of the thinking part, like don't think. That's very hard. That is something that I need to practice myself as well. So what I was talking to Golda is we'll do a challenge and we'll keep track of each other's in terms of these kind of activities. When the author Joseph Noyan say that you need to create an environment like physical environment or digital environment to help you to get into that state. So these states for me, I thought about it. In some point or the other, it occurred because that's when the thoughts happen, like the aha moment that, oh, you know, for me. First, when I'm under the water, when I'm in the water, in a swimming pool in the ocean, when I'm under the shower, 
a lot of time, I feel more relaxed and I'll have that aha moment, you know, with things that I've been thinking through. And those are the ideas. So those are equivalent to the thoughts that exist from, come from within. Or sometimes when I'm doing CrossFit and on a assault bike with the techno music, whatever it is with the group. And then there are point where it's really, really hard, really, really challenging and I almost want to give up. And the music starts to pick up. And at that moment, I kind of just forget things around me. And I'm just in trend in that beat, you know, and those moments, a lot of time I have the aha moment. Or when I'm walking Camino, for instance, the long distance trekking. A lot of time when I'm in the nature, having a long walk, those are the moments that will come to me. But the thinking is another thing. Like once you have the thoughts and you kind of just keep digging in, like when you try to answer the how and why, that's when the old suffering starts. So when I was talking to Golda about this, I was saying that, okay, then in this case, we have to capture the moment when we switch from thought to thinking because then you can distinguish mm -hmm. and once you distinguish mm -hmm. that you can basically just do it you know like so for instance we were saying yesterday when i'm walking on the street i see a guy coming i said he's really really attractive i just go out to say hey you look gorgeous you look cute like i just don't think about how i should bring on a sentence but I just go out to the person and compliment she said exactly that's what you should do you know she started to as a girl for her when she is on the road walking on the street when she see another female walking towards her and the person is dressing really well she'll say hey you know you have a beautiful dress hey that's a beautiful blouse compliments she said that's a very good start to practice just do it. I can do it sometime, but not all the time because when someone who is really, really good looking and then you're kind of like physically attracted to a person, I will think twice, you know, I'll be like, mm, is that a good way to say things? But if someone that I just see as a buddy or friend or, you know, I'll just go to a person and kind of be a bit more humorous or flirtatious to kind of get it done. What I saw was this, that thinking is the start of all suffering. So in this case, you don't think, you just go with the thought. Thought is something that is more innate, right? Like inherent. But there are times where you have this thought and then you interact with the physical world and that resulted in something. That will not stand at that point of time, right? You will start to interact with other things with some reaction coming back and then that will trigger you to think or respond in a certain manner and will have that refinement of this thought. To some extent, I think subconsciously, maybe yes. If you want to distinguish so defined, yes, perhaps. Yeah. But the thing is, mm -hmm. what the book is trying to say is you need to stop thinking because non-thinking is equivalent to thoughts. That means you're in a flow state. You're really doing something that you're passionately involved with and you have the joy. Mm. It's basically how you vibrate, how you send out your energy to the universe kind of thing. I mean, if you combine, okay. I mean, like connect that to the spiritual elements. Do you see this very similar or dissimilar about the concept of conscious versus subconscious? Conscious will be linked more towards thinking. Subconscious is something that is more thought. I have a lot of times when I'm running, showering, in the toilet basically. You step away from your desk while you're working, you go to the loo, and then at that moment you're like, aha, what I was thinking just now, I have an answer. And that is a very subconscious thing. So, oh yeah, okay, let's just go and do it from here. Precise definition, I don't know whether that's comparable, but in the logic of how you yeah. explain it, yeah, perhaps it does. The challenging part is not only the simple thing, but the things that you are very troubled with at the moment. So those are the things that I apply. For instance, I was talking to Golda with regards to YouTube videos creation, the business model, how do you get it more financially sustainable and independent, you know? So obviously for the whole YouTube thing, I mean, all this while I've been talking to you about the thumbnail, the title, the content, yeah. you know, how to do SEO and stuff like this. Those require a lot of thinking and a lot of number crunching. I was talking to Golda, I say, then you defeats the whole purpose of creating things that you truly enjoy, like a gift that you want to give it to the outside world. Yeah, you're constantly thinking how you could uh -huh. get the numbers, like subscriber or the likes, in order for, to help you to grow. Mm -hmm. That's not wrong with it because that's just how the whole algorithm and the business model from YouTube is set up because they want to encourage people to put on content for the interaction so they can do advertisement and blah, blah, blah. But as a content creators, the reason why you join, of course, there are different reasons there. Some of them, most of the people have this financial goal driven. They want to set up their own company. They want to set their own business or startup so they can be a bit more independent instead of relying on one job, right? So it's more of the passive income route. Some of them want to use it to do advertisement, to put on their product or services out there. So digitally, it is a good platform. So there's always a reason or motivation behind, you see. So I was trying to apply this thinking versus thoughts into the whole YouTube creation, the like video creations part, and also the business model part, which helped. We kind of come to a conclusion that, you know, like a lot of time, we learn a lot of things from early adults course. 
But then there's a system itself. Ali himself is known as a productivity guy. So during the course, yeah. there's a lot of templates that's being given and then you basically just have to go through them. So he tried to teach you how do you go from A to Z. Mm -hmm. So you can just be autopilot when it comes to video creation. But the content itself is still something that you have to do. You have to think about the ideas, mm -hmm. do the script writing, you need to make it more structured to break it down into hook, introduction, body, and outro. It's just like a normal essay writing. And how do you capture the attention of the audience and how you film, you know, some of the technical it's things. really try to draw people in. Exactly. Right? So there's a different yeah. area there that you need to be very, very specific. So all this while, since a year now I've been doing YouTube. All this slowly accumulated. It frustrates me sometimes that I'm not growing. So I'm just talking to God, how can we make it in a sense that we really still enjoy it, but at the same time, it will grow automatically because people really align with the content we're providing, the values that we are vibing. So those are quite a good mm. thing. So that's why the podcast thing with her through the accountability partner call, the idea came out and also the business part as well. So just the conception, how she did it and blah, blah, blah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And also another example, when I apply the thinking and thoughts part of what's happening to mom right now, you know, how the whole situation kind of to some way or the other affect us. Yeah, there is a lot of thinking on the event itself. At least from my side, you know, there's a, what if, what mm -hmm. if she passed away? What if the chemotherapy does not work? What if she falls really, really physically sick? All these are all the thinking. And then you just keep thinking mm -hmm. the different possibility of what will happen. It's true. Right. At some point, some of these events will happen. What can I do at this moment to some extent to end that suffering? Actually, when you first mentioned about thinking as a suffering, it triggers like a response in my mind already because from my perspective, the way that I'm wired probably, mm -hmm. I don't see thinking as a suffering. So it's rather interesting to see it from the other end. To me, thinking is a process and it will reach a conclusion for a thought temporarily. And then thereafter, as I talk about that thinking process and thought to people, I will be challenged, right? Like there'll be opposing ideas or people who agree, but there's slight like tweak of things. And then that's where the thoughts get refined. That's an interesting thought. I think you're more analytical, but what I'm arguing here is yeah. thought is from the within. It just come to you. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely get that. Then the way I look at- But how about the suffering part? You don't suffer. Yes, I do suffer about that, but I don't see it as a root of all suffer. A lot of times when I think is like when I think and I reach a dead end and that's where I realize that okay there's limitation in my thoughts whatever I think whatever that thought is and then that's where I need to talk to people see how people think about this sometimes on certain topic my thought for that will be very very myopic mm. and then when I talk to others ah I have missed out so many points that's where I need to refine he has a certain frameworks that he provides. Like he has a framework. Do, yeah, a few frameworks there. That's why I mm -hmm. need to reread them again. But I'm just like giving the whole concept of the difference between thoughts and thinking there. I'm keen to look into the framework because the way I look at it and now as you explain, then I would love to know that as he breaks down, I, I suppose you can apply it in daily life. Mm -hmm. And I'm also intrigued to know like what is the benefits. I help you to be a bit more elevated in life itself. I will just using that whole idea to apply to the death part. It is a fact it will happen to all of us at yeah. one point or the other. At least for me, why is it suffering? Because I think a lot about what if, and also I'm not willing to let go. Letting go is a part of that too. And I'm just constantly thinking how can we prolong and help her to suffer less? Of course, the medical treatment, all those, it seems that it's helping, it's doing the work, but it does not take away the fact that she will pass one day. How can I reduce that thinking in order for me to suffer less? Because sometimes I feel like I'm just literally exhausted. I think there is this book. I have not personally read it before. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the title called Thinking Fast and Slow? Yeah. I remember talking to some friends around who read the book mm -hmm. and just as a casual chat. They also thought about when do you need to be subconscious, when do you need to be conscious. So maybe it's a good literature review about this topic, you know, mm -hmm. not only reading the book that you mentioned, but yeah. also related things about thinking. Mm -hmm. Because there's another book by Malcolm Gladwell called Blink. There's this point he made inside, mm -hmm. which is about trusting what comes to your mind first and don't overthink. Because exactly. that is what is innate. So I listened to Liu Shen's podcast, latest podcast this week. He was talking about mentorship, being interviewed by another person. So one of the things that caught my attention was about Nudge by Cass Sunstein and Richard Thethler. They are behavioral economist and also a legal counselor in University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. They published this book called Nudge in 2008 and then read 
publish that again with some refinement 2021 last year I think yeah. so the gist of it basically the way that they look at Nudge is like as an intervention mm-hmm. a little push to maintain the freedom of choice of a person yeah. but then you steer this person towards the direction that this person wants mm-hmm. so you, when you think about Nudge a Nudge is in life it can be things that you set up not as a hindrance but to help you to propel yourself towards certain goals that you want you set an alarm clock every day because mm. you want to wake up at five to go for your crossfit so that can be viewed as a nudge itself so that's when i start to think about this nudge like are there any nudge that i have recognized and applied it to my life to help me towards what i want to achieve everybody have the intention it's just how then do you have this little intervention in your life which is act as a push to maintain you as a person to go towards that goal you know the watch i'm wearing this one yeah the Arming watch mm. Why did I buy this watch and wear it one and a half years back was really I wanted to track my health in general. Okay. But little did I know that with this tracker, there's a lot of data in it mm-hmm. and it helps, it motivates me to go towards a healthier lifestyle. This is something that I have put in place unknowingly. Mm-hmm. But then in the end I realized this is really a nudge in my life that it helps me to go towards the life that I want it to be. Another example I have in we are native Chinese speaker. There was a period in life that I don't really speak. Chinese for yeah. a long time. A language is as such that if you don't use it, mm. you'll get rusty, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was rusty for me. Mm. So what I did is to speak Mandarin for sure, mm-hmm. read, mm-hmm. listen, mm-hmm. and watch. Mm-hmm. And then you talk to people. So it's like a 360 all round exposure in terms of nudge for myself so that I can continuously use this language. Something that's more relatable lately is I'm trying to pick up tennis. Mm -hmm. So one thing I did was every time when I finish a tennis session, I would then ask them, hey, when are you free next? Let's just book it. So that's just one small little nudge. Once you start saying this, I mean, I have an example already. The reason I go to CrossFit, at first was just like, I want to get back into shape. Personally for Mm me, it help me to set myself right like mentally before a day starts that's what i like about it okay, and also with ego wise it's important because it's a very addicted sport so i need to be careful because when my In ego is to protect bigger yourself. then i get injured very quickly so whenever uh, i find that now okay. i can't do it anymore i'll drop the weight and just focus on the form because everyone's working on something. Anyway, it's just one of them. Right, and the language right. one, I have the same thing as well. Like Mandarin Chinese is something that I have not used for a long time, especially when I live in Europe. Of mm-hmm. course, I find it rusty as well, but I try to speak as much as possible. But like when I'm in Asia, I constantly talk to myself in German so I can practice that language or talk to friends in that language so I can mm-hmm. improve on and still maintain it. Because language is something like, as you say, if you don't use it, you get really, really rusty. Yeah, I'll write it yeah, on my diary definitely. and stuff like that. So those are the mm-hmm. little knowledges. But then why do I do that? Because I invested so many years in this and so many financial resources, time, energy in this language. I don't want to forget about it. I don't want to just let it go, you know? So that's why the only way for me is up. So I think we have two words, right? Do we, for this week? For me, it's nudge. Nudge. For me, it's thoughts. In that case, and thank you everyone yeah. for watching this episode of Henry and Mike, Thoughts and Nudges. Be kind to yourself, <laughs> take care of each other, and don't forget to and smile. Don't and forget to smile. Don't forget to subscribe, Henry and Mike. This is Henry. This is Mike, signing off. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. Don't forget to smile, take care of each other, and be kind to yourself. Don't forget to smile. <laughs> I forgot everything.